only one. <laughs> well, for two days we talked on focus on Jesus. Today it's different. It's a subject that's not talked about too much, which should be uh, in, in the body of Christ. I understand why it's not, because people get freaky. <laughs> and uh, so I declare over everybody that no one in here is going to get freaky. <laughs> I'm not saying that maybe you already are, but at least you're not going to get any. <laughs> at least you won't get any worse. Since you have been learning not only about healing, but to minister healing and to stand for your own healing, uh, and then to go out, that's the main thing. We become spiritual gluttons, and we keep everything for ourselves. And really, that's not what God wants. He wants us to be well. He wants us to be whole. He wants us to prosper, but he wants us to minister to others. People that don't know the Lord and people that do know the Lord because some churches just don't teach on healing. Some don't even believe in healing. Right. Only if it's thy will, Lord. So that's an important part that we share that with those in the world and those that need healing. But today, we're going to be talking a little bit about demons, demonology, and uh, <laughs> I cast that laughing spirit out of you. <laughs> I'm going to be quoting some things of Lester Summerall. Wow. And uh, he was my teacher for a couple of years. And uh, I should have really been in a few of his books, you know, to rehearse and go over, and, but I didn't. I, 12 o'clock last night was a good time. <laughs> and John 10.10. 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I come so that they may have life, and that life might have, and that they might have it more abundantly. In other words, that you be walking victory. That's what Jesus did. Father, I didn't pray. Thank you for reminding me. But Father, I just thank you for this group that's here. I thank you, Father God, that their spiritual ears and spiritual eyes are open to receive and to retain in Jesus' holy name. And I thank you, too, Father, for your word in Ecclesiastes 8, 4, where the word of the king is, is power. So, Father, I thank you, not only am I speaking your word, but power is going out into each and every one in Jesus' holy name. Jesus. And John 8, 44, you belong to your father, the devil. This is when they were criticizing Jesus, and they were saying, we, um, we're not slaves. We're, nobody holds us. We're, we're children of Abraham, and here they're under Roman rule. So they weren't free. And uh, this is where they called Jesus um, a bastard in plain English. And so this is Jesus answering. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out the father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his own native language, for he is the liar and the father of lies. Now, when anything is spoken to you, I'm not talking about people but you get this idea or whatever, or a thought, 
that's contrary to the word of God, that contradicts the word of God, we know that that's not of God. Anything that is hurtful casts you down. That's not of God, we know it. And we should take authority over it right away. Now, there was one time I was reading in bed. This night I was reading, uh, I forget what book it was. I think it was on faith. Yeah, it was on faith. And I'm, I'm just reading before I go to sleep. And this thought, that's not you. You have no faith. You're not a woman of faith. I says, devil, what are you doing in my bedroom? Much less in my bed. <laughs> I says, you're a liar. Get out of here and don't ever come back. That's what he does. He puts doubts because he's a liar. He's not going to tell you the truth. He can't. Now, Lester Summerall. The church must know its arsenal, its weapons. The church must know its enemy. The church must recognize the enemy and his works. The church must be willing to face the enemy to do battle with him. And the church must know that Jesus Christ gives his church power to defeat and to destroy the enemy. It's one thing to defeat him, but you want to destroy him in your life, in every area of your life. You can defeat that person, but if you don't destroy the ax, if you don't destroy it and put a barrier there, come back. Nobody wants to be defeated. They still want to fight to prove they can win. Well, he'll never win. In James 4, 7, submit yourself to the... Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The key word there is submit. Because we rebuke the devil. Uh, we want him to flee from us. But the first thing is to submit to God. Well, what do you do by submitting to God? Right here is word. What does his word say about the situation? Obedience is right. Obedience is a key for everything. As God's children, we have to be unafraid. What do we have to be afraid of? What, look at everything we have. What's on our side? We have weapons. We have the word. We're covered. We have the armor of God in Ephesians. And we should be walking in all of that. So we should have no fear. In 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he may devour. He's not a roaring lion. Matter of fact, he has no teeth. <laughs> if you let him get a hold of you, all he can do is gum you. He can't take a bite out of you. He just gums you. But, you know, be sober, be vigilant. As I said, anything that's not good for you, good for your family, anything that's not from this word is a lie. Outright lie. And then we know Jesus said he's the father of lies. He don't know how to tell the truth. His nature, his very nature, is, is to lie. I mean, he lies to his demons. I mean, <laughs> he, he don't even love them. There's no love in him. He cannot love. I'm not going to talk about haunted houses or haunted objects, even though that's true. The devil can possess a house, he can possess an, an object. But that's not what I'm talking about. <coughs> the 
protect, talking about the mind, protect our mind with the word of God and cover your mind. This is important. Cover your mind with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the devil. Can you picture this? The devil is, is having a heyday. I mean, he's celebrating. He's happy. He's jumping all over the place because Jesus is getting whipped so bad and tortured so bad, and his blood is running out. And, and the devil says, ah, he's defeated. He's defeated. He's, the, the blood's there to prove he's defeated. He's dying. We're going to kill him. He's defeated. He's defeated. The blood is going. Beat him more. Beat him more. Beat him more. See, 39 stripes is a Jewish thing. These are Rome, Roman and they're trained for torture. So we don't really know how many he did get. But they say it was like a cat and nine tails. Well, 39 stripes, you figure that. That's more than 39. But little did he know the blood that he thought he was winning over because he figured, he knew who, who Jesus was. He figured Jesus must have had sin or he would not have been able to, to take hold of him. The devil would not be able to take hold of him. Didn't know it was God's plan. He wasn't around. He wasn't created when it was his plan. But that very blood that the devil is, is happy with and jumping around and celebrating is the very blood that defeated him. And so it's important for our minds to be covered with the blood and the word, the word and the blood. Because our minds wonder. They do. And mine, I had a, a, a very bad time. Uh, before I was saved, after I was saved, I could be working around doing whatever I'm doing and my mind is going and going and going and going and going and going and going from this to that to this to that to this to that, making no sense. All the while, I'm performing whatever I had to do. And when I got saved, did the same thing. And then I, the blood. I loved the, the blood covenant. I, that was one of the first things I learned was the blood covenant, and I love it. I says, no, I, my mind is, belongs to the Lord. Mind, you're not going to run off anymore. You're going to stay fixed and when you want to think of something, you will think of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will think of, of the word. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, mine. Now you shut up and obey. Never had no trouble. So the blood of Jesus is important to plead over your mind. Now he can't sneak in there. And in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. We should have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God. We do have it. We just got to release it within us. So we're going to have a lot of scripture, but I'm also going to share some things that I ministered in. In Matthew 8, when evening came, many who were demon-possessed came to him and he drove them out with a word that's important he drove them out with a word and healed all that was sick now I want to read Matthew 17 14 to 21 and I want to read it out of the King James Version I looked all in other versions but I like the King James Version uh, the best. 14 to 21, where we at? And this was after the uh, transfiguration. And when they were come to the multitude, this is Jesus and his disciples that was with him in the transfiguration. There came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is, the lun he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and off into the water. I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? 
bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples uh, to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for fairly I say unto you, If you have faith as grain as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Be removed hence to yonder, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible for you. However, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now, I hear some dopey stuff. I've heard different ones. Oh, you, you, you can't cast out a demon. If it's in front of you, you've got to go fast. You've got to go pray. You've got to go do this. You've got to have hours. No, that's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about a lifestyle, a lifestyle of prayer, <clears throat> and not so much fasting food. Now, I don't know if Jesus fasted food. He might have, but he fasted. He's our example. He fasted time. He spent nights with his father. Whoa. Devil, I don't care. I'm still going to preach. Try to make me dizzy there. Uh, he's our example. And what did he do? He's passed the time. He spent his nights with the Lord. Sometimes all night. And yet he was refreshed. His body was refreshed and plenished. He had strength. Why? Because he was with the Lord and the Lord took care of everything else. So it's the lifestyle he's talking about here. Your lifestyle of prayer, being before the Lord, reading the word, so that when a situation would come up like that and someone needs to be delivered, you don't have to run over in a corner and start praying. You go to action. And get that person delivered. <clears throat> In Mark 9, 14, Jesus has a dialogue about this same pas uh, passage that I read with the Father. How long was he like this? When did this start? So Jesus is wanting to know more information about it. So it's all right then, but you never, never hold a conversation with the devil. He's waiting for you to. If, if that person, and you're standing with that person and to deliver him, you don't have a conversation with the devil. Because he'll try to trick you. You go about business. Now, there's a difference. Possession, being possessed by the devil, is ownership. The devil takes ownership of you. Not a Christian. Get that through your head. I don't care how goofy the Christian acts. They are not possessed. They cannot be possessed. God took ownership of you. He owned you. You have children. Most everybody in this room has children. If you had children, you own the children when they're little. And even when they're grown, they're yours. They're not your neighbors. They're not the person three blocks down. They're yours. So God owns you. He possesses you. He's your father. You cannot be possessed. You can, however, be oppressed. And that's why I say to plead the blood of Jesus over your mind.
I was called into um, someone approached me and they said that uh, this young girl, well, not a kid, she was a little older than that, but young. And um, she was in a mental institution. And would I go and uh, pray over her? Didn't know the person. And uh, so I says, OK. And we get in the car. And it was pretty far we had to drive. And um, the woman I'm driving with starts telling me about the girl. I said, no, 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 don't tell me nothing about her. I don't want to know. I want to hear from the Holy Ghost. I got to sit down. Um, so we get there. It's a mental institution. And um, we got there. And I read as we pulled up, I says, I was going to Bible Institute, but I wasn't ordained yet. And I said to the girl, the, the woman that drove me, I said, um, I don't have any credentials. So when I go in there and ask to speak to her, if they say no, it's no, because I can't present credentials. I said, I want you to know that before we go in. So <laughs> we went in, and I said, I'd like to speak to someone. So I said, oh, sure, come on. <laughs> I said, thank you, Jesus. I know this is of you. <laughs> and they put me in the elevator, brought me up. And uh, she was in a room. It was an iron door in front and a, and a window. Now, they don't always stay in that room with the iron door. It's just certain times of the day, I guess, the changing of, of either their shifts or lunches or something. And I seen that iron door, and I said, oh, no. <laughs> But the woman says, now, when you want to leave, just holler out the window and the certain woman's name, and they'll come and get you. So I went in there, and this poor girl was so tormented, tormented, tormented. And she's rocking back and forth and hitting and hitting and saying, no, 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 I'm a Christian. I can't do that. No, no, no. She was a Christian. She was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. And these demons were torturing her mind. And I went in there, and, and I start talking to her. And she says, they never shut up. They never shut up. They keep telling me to do real bad things, real, real, real bad things. And I can't do real, real bad things. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. But they won't leave. They won't leave. They won't leave. And then she kept reporting, you know, over and over and over. And... Uh, so I let her go, let her, let her do her talking and everything. And it's just the same thing she would say over, and I'm a Christian, no, no, no. And then she looked at me and she says, I don't know how long I can, can not do things because it's too much. It's too great. And then right back into, no, I won't do that. No, I won't do that. And all the while, they're talking to her. And so I says, well, I came here to pray with you. Would you allow me to pray with you? Yes, 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 yes. So I lay, laid hands on her, and I rebuked those demons in the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus. And I covered her mind in the blood, her body in the blood, her emotions in the blood. And immediately, she was a different person, calm and peaceful. And, and then she says, they want to give me shock treatments tomorrow. Now, I don't know if they did shock treatments back then, because they did stop it, because it's very dangerous. But in her mind, they were anyway. But I don't know. It was, a, you know, back a ways, uh, maybe 30 35 years ago or so, and uh, she's still perfectly whole and sound. But in two days, she was out of there. In two days, she was a whole person, sound, everything, and out of there. And that's the power of the blood. And that's the power that flows through you. The power of the Lord Jesus Christ 
flows through the same spirit, the same power that Jesus walked in is what you and I have, is what we walk in. There is nothing, absolutely nothing to fear from the enemy in any way, shape, or form that he will come at you. That's his power. He has given it to us. We didn't earn it. We couldn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. We couldn't deserve it. But he's given it to us. And we walk in the covering of the blood. His blood. <laughs> yeah, he don't want this. <laughs> but that's okay. My first encounter. See, the, these, these things are really out there in my mind because they were the first. I was born again in March 9th. I was, wa I was uh, water baptized on Mother's Day of that same year. I was, uh, had the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence and speaking in tongues in June. And now it's August, and, Pat, and I did get saved through Pat Robertson's ministry through television. And uh, he's holding those campaigns that he used to have. I don't think he does it anymore. And it was in Pennsylvania. I think it was Mercer, Pennsylvania. It was a cow farm. I mean, it was huge. The property was huge and was camping out. And uh, he had all the different speakers and different tents and also a few people from the church were going. They asked me if I wanted to go. And being a new Christian, I wanted everything, you know. Anything that was going on, I wanted it. So I said, yeah, I'll go. And my husband's debating with me. You'll not like it. It's camping. You'll hate it. You don't want to go. And he's trying to talk me out. I said, I'm going. And that settles it. And I'm using your tent. Because he used to like to go camping. <laughs> So I went, and uh, where the guys, the ones we went with, put my tent up. You know, there, there's a lot of um, cow chips around. <laughs> That's where they put my tent. <laughs> but you couldn't help it. So we were there uh, three days, two nights and three days. And now I'm all excited. And so I'm going from tent to tent, listen to this one when he's done, and go to another one, and then to another one. And there's so many things going on, and they have the, the Bible bookstores. They have everything there. And, uh, but at night, and I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really listening. I'm participating when they tell you to participate. And uh, this is just I'm not even a year now in the Lord. And now at night, they have the big arena where everybody comes at night. And they have entertainers, and they have speakers, and Pat also spoke. And uh, so I'm, they're all sitting on the ground. I'm sitting on the ground listening. And uh, it's all new. It's all wonderful to me. This is absolutely, this is heaven. And the Lord says inside of me, get up and go to the deliverance tent. I know. What, Lord? Get up and go to the deliverance tent. I didn't know they had a deliverance tent. I didn't know where the deliverance tent was, but I was obedient. I got up. I said, you have to show me. And so I just walked, and I just walked where the Holy Spirit led me, and he led me right into the deliverance tent. And I walked right on over to this girl, um, the workers were never alone. They had two men and two women over this, this young girl. She was a teenager. Later we found out she was, went into the youth meetings a couple of times, and they seen that she was weird and knew she wasn't a Christian, even though she said she was. 
but she wasn't. It was the devil trying to get in there. And they invited her to this. Uh, and um, it would sound good to her, so she came. But they invited her so she could get delivered. They had an alternative motive. And this young teenager, nice and slender like they are, and not very tall, short person, not like me, a little <laughs> taller. And, uh, and she's throwing these guys around. And they can't control her. All I did was pray in tongues. That's all I know what to do. So I just stood there praying in tongues. And one of the women looked up and says, honey, you're speaking my language. Continue to pray. And I think it was Polish. And uh, so that's all I did. I, I stood there and I prayed. And then they couldn't figure nothing out. And, but the Lord was moving then. And they, but the thing of it was is to see this snarling, vicious, uh, demonic power through this one, the just young girl. And then to have the demons cast out of her and see the transformation, even before she got saved, there was a transformation. But then they got her saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues before she left. And I stayed in the, in the tent that whole night. But the thing of it is, is two of the fellas that came with us from our church that we was in, not this church, I was in Assembly of God for a few years. They came in and they're like this, walking. And all of a sudden, you could see their face change to fright, real fear. And they ran out. They ran out. Now, they weren't new like me. The one was maybe a, 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 a year or a little more than a year, and the other longer. So I stayed there and worked with them and everything. And then when it was done, they asked me to come back the next night, which I did. And then I worked with the people, you know, with deliverance. But at <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning, when the thing's over, I get outside the tent, it's pitch black. I says, Lord, I don't know where I'm camped. <laughs> and you brought me here, you bring me home. <laughs> so he did. I, I got to where I was supposed to be, and I seen the same two fellas sitting outside the tent, their tent. So I go up to them, and they say, are you all right? Are you all right? Tell me, is everything all right? I says, what did you run out for? Why did you look so afraid? Oh, the power of Satan. I said, and the other guy says, yeah, it was awful. We didn't know Satan had that power. Oh, the power of Satan. I says, are you nuts? <laughs> I said, that was the power of God. Can you get any greater power than God? God was at work. The yeah. devil don't like it. He's going to try to test the person that's trying to deliver, but he knows he has to give up. But he'll test that person because if that person backs down, they can stay. That's right. I was new. I didn't know this stuff. It was coming out of my mouth, but it was the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> And I was not afraid. I really was so enthroned about the power of God and the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus to see these people coming in, oppressed, possessed, no place to turn. And, and by the name of Jesus and the power of Jesus, To be delivered. I just, yes, Lord, I gotta back up here, see if I can find it. Did I turn two pages at once? 
That's a very important scripture I want to read and read off here, and I can't think of where it is at. And I want to read it not just... Okay, it's Matthew, it's Mark, yeah, Mark 5, 1. And then we'll get back to this. But this is important to know because this is the demoniac because of what we're talking about. They went across the lake to the region of Genezareth. This is Mark 5, 1. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs and met him. Understand now, the devil can't stop you from coming to Jesus no matter what. This man ran to Jesus. After that, though, the devil took over. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, nor even with chains, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke them, and the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Now, we have a lot of cutters nowadays, and it's demonic. I don't care what excuse they use. It's demonic. They need to be delivered of it. But you have to minister Jesus to them before you can do anything. Can't just walk up and say, I'm going to deliver you. <laughs> You're not going to get hit in the head. <laughs> and when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Now the devil's gone into it. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. So before the devil was talking to him, Jesus had already said for that devil to come out from him. Then Jesus asked, what is your name? Now, why did he ask what your name is? Remember when I read he spoke a word and they came out? This is the first time Jesus is encountering um, the demons that did not come out right away. So this is new to Jesus. He delivered people right away by the word. One word and they had to leave. And so he asked, what's this? This is new. He asked, what's your name? He, Jesus wanted to know, what's going on here? You, he didn't come out. My name is Legion, he replied, but we are many. For he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. They did not want to go out of the area, the demons. And it says in here, the devil pleaded again and again. That meant that Jesus kept at it. Come out. Don't send us out of this area. For some reason, they wanted to be in that area. Don't send it. Come out. And we, we don't, don't want to leave. Promise us that you'll not send us out of this area. Promise us you'll send us into the pigs. So this is the first time Jesus is up against this where the devil is going to be stubborn. Before it was with the word, he cast them all out. This one here, there's a fight. It's not that they demons didn't know they had to leave. They knew it. They knew they had to leave. That wasn't the question. That wasn't the problem. They didn't want to leave the area. Not at all. So Jesus finally says, go in the pigs. Well, the pigs had enough brains, even though they were pigs. So he gave them permission, and the evil spirits came out, went into the pigs, into the herd, 
which was about 2,000 in number, rushed down the, the um, deep bank into the lake and were, were drowned. Well, the demons didn't get drowned, but now they're not out of the area. <laughs> so, and that's important to know because sometimes they don't want to come right out. But you got to be stubborn. You got to know who you are. You got to know your sin. You got to know the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus and have all authority and take control. Never debate with the devil. I, I, it didn't happen to me, but I know I was present when it happened. I know who you are. <laughs> I know what you did. You don't answer that. That's not any of their business, who you are, what you did. Stay focused. Stay focused. Shut up. And I have with me delivering and, and uh, the voices. I got a right to be here. Who gave you the right? Who says it's right? And I don't carry on conversation, but because it was, I have a right to be here. He did. Shut up and let me speak to the person. I spoke to the person, and uh, I'm going to tell you what the right was because he, he had said so. I said, you hear what's going on? Yes. Do you want this demon in you, or do you want to get rid of it? Out. I don't want it. Shut up. Be good. Be quiet. Just be calm. Went back to the demon. You heard him. You can't have him. He don't want you. That settles it. Get out in Jesus' name and in his blood. That was it. But that don't happen all the time. That's just once in a great while some demon thinks he's smart. He's going to try to trip you up. He knows he's got to leave. He's going to try to trip you up. Don't fall for it. Just don't fall for it. So I spent those two nights in that tent with them, enjoying it. Join, and I just enjoyed seeing the power of God. I didn't enjoy the demons. I didn't enjoy all of that stuff. I just enjoyed seeing the power of God and seeing him work. And then when... Uh, I think it was every two years or three years, something like that, that Pat Robinson would hold those uh, campaigns or whatever they're called, and I would work in their tents. And then also when uh, Jim Baker and Tammy Baker, they would hold them also, and they held theirs, though, in Virginia, and I, I did the same thing there. And uh, only, not, be, not because of the demons, but because of the power of God. I learned, I, I learned each time, each time I learned. And I, what I learned was good. What I learned was the power of God, the ability, and the, and the power of the blood, and the anointing that is in us, and the anointing of no fear. No fear at all. One drop of fear. If you got fear, leave it alone. Let somebody else handle it. Let it be at another time. Just step back from it. But there's no end to your ability in anything God tells you to do. As I said, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Listen, you cover your children, you cover your house, you cover your mind, you cover your body. You cover what belongs to you in the blood of Jesus, and it stops the devil in his tracks. He can't 
pass the blood. He don't want to pass the blood either. It frightens him. It's torture. It's torture. You want to torture the devil? Go around talking about the blood. <laughs> the blood of Jesus. That's torture to him because he thought he had it. He thought he won the battle. It's <laughs> so one time in church. This girl was coming to church, not here, uh, for a couple of weeks. And uh, the pastor had said to me, uh, I've been talking with her, counseling with her, and she needs deliverance. Um, Gloria, would you take her in the bathroom? She's not saved yet. Take her in the bathroom and uh, do what you have to do. He says, I'll send so-and-so in with you. And he was a, gentle, a man. And then another man came in, I think, just to observe. But it was all right because he just sprayed in the spirit. And he says, I'm sending this other one. The, the one he sent in with me was a very nice man. I don't know why I'm saying I'm going to have to. It was a very nice man. And uh, him and his wife were really nice people. So we go in there, and he immediately starts to take over. Now, the pastor had told me to do this. That's fine. I know better. You don't want to put anything into that situation that the devil can work on. So I just stood back, prayed in the spirit, and said, it's yours, Lord. You want me there? Fine. You don't? Fine. And he opens up the Bible, and he's talking through, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's ministering through Galatians. And he's going through this fruit, fruit of the Spirit with this woman. Well, is it patience? No, you don't have patience. Is it love? No, you don't have love. It's just, that's all he's doing, going through the book of Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm standing there <laughs> thinking inside myself, this ain't working. <laughs> So finally he looked up and he says, Gloria, will you take over? <laughs> That's what I said. If I had walked, if I took one step forward and said, you know, pastor told me to do this. And um, it's nice what you're doing, but it's not working. The devil would have the situation. I just stood back. I knew better than do anything else but stand back and wait. And so I said, will you take over? Sure, I will. And so when I, as soon as I moved forward, that demon knew. And that woman crawled up under the sink and twisted herself around the pipe. <laughs> and it's the blood of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. It's persistence on your side. On your part, it's knowing that that thing has to leave no matter what kind of tricks it's trying to pay. Amen. It has to go. And you're not going to put up with it. But you're not going to put it up with it within the authority. Don't debate. Don't argue. Don't do nothing. Use the authority that Jesus Christ has given us. You are people of authority in this earth. You are people with a sound mind and the mind of Christ for any situation that comes your way. You are a people that are anointed. Yes. Anointed to walk here on earth. If you weren't, God would have took you home. You're here, so you're walking in the anointing that you're supposed to have to be here and to do whatever the Lord directs you to do Amen. without fear, without objection, knowing that no matter what it looks like, if it's impossible, you're anointed to do it, and God will make the way. And if you're delivering someone, if God's called you in that area, fine. Go to it. If he hasn't, don't do it. 
And one reason why the churches don't like to teach on demons because after they teach on it, they, people go around finding demons under every teacup. And that's not so. A young born again Christian uh, might not talk right, might not dress right, might not look right, might have 10 tons of makeup on, or might come in with their hair all knotted, a beard down to their knees. It don't matter. God is working on that person on the inside. The Holy Spirit knows what needs to be corrected and what needs to be insured and built up on from the inside. This other stuff don't mean a hill of beans. Let the Holy Spirit do his work. The person's not possessed. He's not oppressed. He's not anything. He's a child of the living God. Let him alone. Don't find demons under every single teacup. I just gave you a few of the things that I did, but there are ones that, you know, that I never forget. You're working along and you're moving along and things happen and you forget it until something else reminds you of it. But these are always with me. And, but it's like I said, I marvel over the power of God working through us. I marvel because who are we? We're children of the Most High God, but who were we before we got saved? Yet he saved us. And he puts his power, his authority, his blood, his name, everything in us. And he calls us perfect. He calls us pure. He calls us holy. He calls us set apart for him. There's no room for fear. There's no room to back down from the enemy. There's no room for it at all. Talk about the blood a few minutes. The Israelites sprinkled blood in Egypt and bought deliverance. Rahab used a scarlet ribbon as a sign of the blood and it bought deliverance. The high priest in the Old Testament sprinkled the blood and it bought forgiveness. Jesus sprinkled his own blood and bought salvation to all mankind. His blood bought redemption, healing, protection, and victory. And 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, we were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. If it wasn't for his blood, none of us be saved. And Hebrews 9, 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Satan's cohorts cannot penetrate the blood. The blood has made you free from sickness and disease. I want to read something in, Mar in yeah, Mark 16, and then we'll close. I could keep going, but I can't. The time run out. This is Jesus. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubbornness, their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Now he's talking covenant. This is the commission he's given us. But it's covenant. He shed his blood and made covenant. A greater covenant than any other covenant. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all uh, creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will, not be, will be condemned. Here's the covenant. And these signs 
will accompany those who believe. Do you believe? In my name, not any other name, but the name of Jesus, in my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick, and they will get well. When you place your hands on the sick, you know in your heart that they will get well, whatever it looks like. You got your job done. If they want to keep their healing or receive their healing, that's theirs. But your job is done. Don't put doubt in it. You lay hands on someone, there's no doubt. They will be healed. Don't matter what they look like. You cast out, it says cast out there. This is the covenant. And he's speaking covenant. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. And I give it to you. You got the same authority and the same power that Jesus has. Amen. Power without authority is no good. Authority without power is no good. You got it both, the authority and the power. And you got his name. You got his blood. You got his DNA. You got his victory. Amen. And you got all it takes to get the job done of whatever he tells you to do. You got all it takes to walk planet Earth free. Amen and amen and amen. Now, even though we're closed, if you got, because <laughs> it is 1130.